Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. Welcome. Today is June 1st. We're beginning week 15. Before we get into today's activity, if you want to just let me know if you can hear me okay, if the audio is coming through. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Great. Thank you. Hello, Stacy, Caro, Paulina, Oralis. Welcome. Today, guys, I want to get uh, get right into it because, again, I want to give you as much of today as possible to finish um, today's activity. I want to give us one more day to finish our um, our activity where we try to bring together the idea of love and wisdom. So if you go into the same document that we worked in last Friday and I believe last Thursday, uh, I want to go over a couple of things before you get into uh, the activity. So try to, in many of your cases, try to simplify the, the sentence stem so that we begin with a subject. And I'm suggesting everyone use the word love as the subject. All right, so try to begin your sentence stems with the word love as the subject and begin your sentence stem with the main clause. All right, so because we're going to have three different connectors, we're going to have so, but, and because, we probably don't need another subordinating clause. Right, so in your sentence stem, try to avoid the subordinating clause. If you have a relative clause or other prepositional phrases, that's fine. But I think I would uh, not include a, uh, a subordinating clause that begins your sentence stem. Again, let's begin with the word love. If you look at uh, Prope A, they worked on it this morning. A lot of the groups have begun with shortening their sentence stems, making it uh, simpler, fewer words. And in most cases, they're beginning with the word love, or I think there's one case where self-love uh, was also used, which applies to point number seven. So when we begin looking at our own sentence stems, try to avoid uh, try to avoid a subordinating clause, try to include the word love at the beginning of the of the sentence as a subject. And also as a reminder, try to avoid using the same words, that are included in the point that you are that you're working on. Again, as an example, if you have if you're working on feed yourself ideas, try to avoid the words feed yourself and ideas. Try to think of other other words that either are synonymous that have the same meaning, or perhaps think of a detail. Think of a, a, an example, a specific example that would fall under this category that you could talk about as your sentence stem. All right, we want to try to use other words that are, um, instead of using the words that are are part of our uh, item that we're focusing on. Now, as a reminder, at the top of the list, there's a few things to avoid. Try to avoid the, the personal pronoun it. Try to avoid phrases like it is pos it is important, sorry, it is necessary, it is vital, it is essential. Um, I mentioned trying not to uh, repeat the same words as our as our sections. And we want to use the word love at the beginning as the subject. And once you're finished, very important to try to remove all the comments that are that have been posted, right? If you have any comments in your section, go ahead and remove those as you are making changes to your text. Today, I want to give you guys the rest of today to complete this uh, this uh, activity. If you want me to look at something, jump in, un unmute your microphone. We can look at it. Um, I might be making a few comments depending on what I see, or I may just be making some comments throughout today's class as a um, just as general cl whole class feedback, 
Um, but take a look at what you have. Try to bring in together the idea of love and wisdom. And when you're making these changes, also a couple of other words I would try to avoid. One is the um, adverb of frequency. So sometimes, perhaps, right? We use these to kind of hedge our writing. So we want to try to avoid that for this exercise. So no, sometimes, no absolutes also, like always, never, et cetera. All right, so let's try to think about those, these types of aspects as we finalize this uh, activity. Again, I want to give everyone today to, to make the final changes and uh, ask any final questions. Of course, continue uh, make sure that you are uh, including your name at the end of the sentence once you've completed. I think most of you are doing that. And that's it. So if anybody has any questions or wants me to look at something uh, specifically, just unmute your microphone. And um, I'll continue taking a look at, um, at your work as you, as you go through today's class. Ben. Yes, go ahead. So if we don't have comments, we are like free? Uh, not necessarily, no. We, we need to make sure that you're uh, taking a look at the six points here at the top of the, the document. Um, let's take a look. Uh, this is Lisette, right? I'm sorry, who was uh, speaking just now? Yes, Liz. Okay. Uh, let's see, so. Okay, I would try to. Um, Okay, I, I like what you guys have here. The just a couple of things here I would take a look at though. Um, I would try to avoid sometimes like uh, adverbs of frequency. I would try to avoid those. Um, I'm looking at the second sentence. So I would try to include a subject after the connector, but, okay, so I don't see, let's see, I don't think I see a subject here, but sometimes understand, so maybe a subject for the verb understand. Or, yeah, take a look at that. Um, I, I, let's go back to your sentence stem. It says, love helps you to have affinity or have an affinity with other people. Mm, what, what do you mean by an affinity with other people? You think about what you mean by that. Maybe there's a different way of saying this. Um, and instead of using the connector and, like this and this, just state what you think love helps with in terms of empathy. And, you know, I would, uh, I would take a look at the, the idea of affinity, having an affinity, right? And I think we use the term for other people. But I think I would take another look and see if there's a, a different way of saying that a little bit more specifically. You know, with this, with the idea of empathy, think of a, just an example. You could even think of an example using love that really expresses what, what you mean by, by empathy. You know, without, um, you know, being too abstract. I think I would try to be a little bit more specific. And again, just keep the same ideas that you have here, right? It's just 
maybe may, being a little bit more specific and uh, both in the sentence stem and then just grammatically making sure after you have the connector that you have a subject and a verb. And finally, I'll say when you have after the connector because, because that is how you get, if there's another way of stating that, right? So I asked before if you could try to avoid the, the pronoun it, I'd also suggest that you try to avoid the pronoun that. We want to be specific. So if you can paraphrase what you mean by that, right, or even provide a, a more specific detail, then your sentence is going to be a little bit more descriptive. Okay, so I think I would focus on on those key key points. Look at the word that. Look at sometimes. Check your subject and verb uh, after the connector, but. And take a, take another look at your sentence stem and see if you can simplify and remove the connector and and just state what the the what it means to have an infinity for other people all right okay thank you okay you're welcome guys do take a look at um Liz's example, they have a good example of starting with this idea of love, so there's no phrases beforehand. Um, if you look at from Prope A, many of the sentences are again beginning with the word love, and I think that's that's a, a good way to start. All right, so take a look and kind of compare what you're working on versus what, what some of your classmates are putting together and to get some ideas. Okay, guys, take a look at your sentences with so, and I'm specifically looking at uh, Oscar and Sylvia as your example there, um, but I want everyone to take another look at the connector so, and really look at so is being a connector that connects the cause to the res to the reason or the results, right? The cause and the reason and results. All right, so here are a few simple examples, but make sure there's a clear relationship between, between both parts of the sentence on both either side of the connector, so. So you could say he's hungry, He's hungry, so he gets some food. You can think of it like saying he's hungry, so for this reason, he gets some food. For this reason, right? you could kind of insert that mentally if that helps to think about how to connect both sides of the, um, of the clause, both clauses on either side of the connector. The weather isn't very nice, so for this reason, we didn't go camping, all right? So try to think of using that uh, when you're looking at your sentences, especially with the word so, so that there's a clear relationship between the two clauses that, that, uh, that are on either side of the connector. Ben. Yes, go ahead. Can you check our new sentence team? Okay. Okay, uh, in your sentence stem, I think I would just remove where you say which involves, uh, I would remove two. So you say, which involves being able to put yourself in the other person's, in the other person's apostrophe S shoes. Mm, 
Let's see, what else? Check your capitalization in the first sentence. Okay, you can say love helps. All right, this is part of the stem. You can say love helps get get a close connection instead of helps you. Love helps get, or you could say helps one get a close connection with, do you want to say close connection or, or closer? Uh, maybe a closer connection. Which one? Uh, so. Now, um, if there's a way, Monse, in the first sentence where you say the the thing is, you guys are using, and this is fine. You're using like uh, figurative language. Uh, you're using. Like when you say, let's say a closer connection, which involves being, you know, putting yourself in one shoes, that's fine. That's kind of, that's a figurative language. Um, in the second sent in the second part, so that you can understand what the other person is going through. If, if you can say, you can understand what the other uh, instead of saying what the other person is going through, is there another way that you can say that more explicitly, more concretely? Basically say the same thing, but see if you can say it just a little bit more uh, succinctly, a little bit more um, concretely. Uh, let's see, the second one, but love helps you to have been Okay, are you still working on the second sentence? Yes, we missed the second and the third sentence. Okay, okay. but you're on the right track. Um, basically, you're saying that I'm, I'm uh, you know, you've got the right ideas, but in, make sure that in the second part of the sentence, um, like what the person is going through, what does it mean to go through something, right? If there's another way of saying that, like that can be a little bit more concretely, especially in the sentence, the part of the sentence that comes after the connector, I would try to do that in just a few changes that I mentioned in the stem, but it's, it's much better. Okay, guys, we're getting close here towards the uh, end of class. I'm um, looking through some of the stems and we're getting much better here, a lot closer to simplifying our sentence stems. If we take a look here, we've got the first one, love is accepting the ideas and thoughts thoughts of other people. So that's that's a good stem. Love is understanding our ideas and objectives. That's a good good example. Love is about having... I would say opposing thoughts. That's another good example. Love is about having opposing thoughts. Um, love helps helps to get closer. Gets a love helps get a closer connection with other people, which involves being able to put yourself in the other person's shoes. All right. And uh, point number five, I would say love is the the ability. Love is the ability to understand an idea on its merits and in an unbiased way. Take a look at uh, the comment guys there, but uh, it's a good, good sentence stem. Just a few changes there uh, to the wording. Um, love implies leaving behind your ego. Um, that's good. It's if you can try to word it in a way that doesn't use the same words as your title. Um, I would try to do that, but it's it is a good example of a sentence stem. But maybe there's another way of saying or referring to ego for for the purposes of your three sentences. So uh, we're getting there, guys. Uh, try to finish this up for uh, today so that we can finalize it. And I can consolidate your ideas from bro both probate groups. And uh, then we'll have one finished document uh, for, for this assignment. Okay, tomorrow we're going to 
begin our next concept. Uh, equality is going to be our next uh, next concept, and we've got a lot of things that we can talk about, think about, and write about. And um, so tomorrow we'll start uh, with a new concept. Okay. Any questions about today's activities, guys? All right, well, if there are no more questions, we'll go ahead and stop for today. And uh, we'll continue tomorrow, guys, same time. And uh, again, we'll introduce new new concepts, a new concept, uh, equality in particular. And again, try to finish this assignment for, for today. All right, thanks, guys. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye. bye.